Okay, so now we're gonna go over how to do the pad change on the air disc brake. So for this particular example, I already have the brakes release, which is what I'm gonna suggest in order to uh, not break the um, adjustment piece, this little adjustment part. So. So one of the key tools you're gonna to need to be able to do this job properly is this piece that fits over the uh, adjustment. I cannot remember. I cannot remember the name of this right now, what it is called. Um, but this adapter is basically made out of soda can metal. So it will, sh it's a shear adapter. <laughs> so the shear adapter is made out of soda can metal. And basically it will snap off uh, really easily. I think you, you don't need to put like, you know, I think more than 10 per, uh, PSI and you're gonna snap this. And that's the reason why I release the brakes. So that way I don't have to worry about if I'm turning it in the wrong direction and end up snapping the shear adapter. Now I will say uh, the easy thing to remember is it is still lefty loosey, uh, righty tighty, meaning that if you're ratchet is set like you have one of these fancy snap on ratchets and it's set to the off that will make you back the tappets off and when it's on that will make you push the tappets in or get tighter against the shoe so keep keep that in mind the shoes the shoe replacement itself is pretty simple all you're gonna do is come in pull out this pin Normally it'll be a Carter key in there. Press down on this while removing the larger pin. You remove the shoe, remove the shoe. Okay, something to note. The shoes can go in both directions, meaning that what can I do? I can flip the shoe around so the backing plate is towards the disc, and guess what? It slides right in. And we see that. If you wanna get fired from your job immediately, then this is what you do, right? I guarantee you, you'll be fired from your job that same day for not paying attention to detail. You need to pay attention to detail when you're doing this because that is a distinct possibility. Okay. So when we have this disassembled, the biggest things we wanna check for is to make sure that the caliber assembly itself will still slide back and forth. Go to my shear adapter, put my shear adapter on. Another thing to note, we don't, you can get, I know it exists in the world, a special bit that will fit this. Do not get that. Always use a shear adapter on this adjustment mechanism because if you jam that adjustment mechanism, this caliber will have to be replaced. Or if, or if you snap that off, this caliber will have to be replaced. So please, Always just use your shear adapters. Don't go get one of them special sockets and do this, okay? The shear adapters are pretty cheap. So we're gonna adjust the tappets out right now. So as I turn that, you see the tappets are spinning out. I don't wanna take them out more than about an inch and a half. And what I really wanna do is just do a good thorough inspection of these boots I wanna make sure that there is no rips or tears inside of these boots. If you find rips and tears in the boots, Bendix does make a boot replacement kit that you can buy, or I don't suggest mechanics actually buy them, your shop should probably buy it. And then the training 
um, to actually do the boot replacement is actually available for free online, if I'm not mistaken. It should be in one of the Bendix, it's in one of the Bendix classes on their, on their break school site. So you should be able to uh, utilize that specialty tool and then replace these boots if you want to. Naturally, you know, you can always go the route of just replacing the entire of the caliber if that's what you all choose to do. So I'm gonna do the, the good inspection, right? This is on a mock-up, so obviously it's gonna be fine. So when I'm backing these boots in, I'm backing these tappets back in to, to the boots. Um, I want to, I'm not trying to go until this tappet is totally flush up against here because that's probably the difference of like one or two clicks realistically. And I don't want to break the shear adapter, right? So I'm trying to do this whole job without breaking the shear adapter. That's like the most thing that I'm most worried about because maybe I'm doing this on the side of the road and I only have access to maybe one or two shear adapters. So I don't want to break one uh, unnecessarily, even though, like I said, they are readily replaceable and easy to find. You don't want to break them, you know, just because you're not paying attention to what you're doing. And once I get that back in, again, I'm making sure my backing plate is facing my tappet. In, right? Making sure my backing plate is facing towards me, right? So in, okay. So now I want to make sure the cradle, the cradle side is facing upwards. So I have my my keeping pin on one side. Then I'm gonna put this pin back in normally. That's probably gonna be a Carter key. And then I'm gonna make sure I bend my tabs on my Carter key. If I have a Carter key, I'm not reusing Carter keys. We don't, re we don't reuse Carter pins at all. So now I'm gonna set my clearance. So I'm gonna go out until I can't move it. And then I'm gonna go back three clicks. So one, two, three, and I'm done. And that's it.